at Heritage Fellowship. It's good to see all of you this morning. Good to have uh, folks joining us um, virtually today. We gather as the church wherever we are. Um, and I especially welcome uh, anyone who's visiting with us today. I think we're all home folks this morning, but we're glad to have all of you with us today. Uh, just a couple of announcements. Uh, next Sunday is Graduate Recognition Sunday. Uh, we're going to be celebrating that here at the church. Uh, Mercer University, a historically Baptist university, has elected to have graduation at 9.30 on Sunday morning, of all things. So I will be there. Justin will be preaching uh, here, and I'm grateful for his presence with you next week. We also have our business meeting uh, this coming Wednesday night. That'll be on Zoom at uh, 6 o'clock. Is that right, Justin? The time is correct, so please join us for that. And then finally, happy Mother's Day to all the mothers who are with us this morning. Uh, thank you for all you mean uh, to your families and all you mean to us here at the church. Mike and Lois uh, have provided car a carnation for each mother. So as you leave today, please, if you are a mother, uh, take a, a carnation there as um, a recognition of Mother's Day. Uh, from Mike and Lois and from your church. We're glad that you're here. We look forward to a wonderful time of worship and of fellowship together. Good morning. If you would please join me in the responsive reading included in your bulletin this morning. Holy God, in reverent awe, we come to worship you. We gather to honor and glorify God's almighty name. Righteous God, we rejoice as we come to worship you. We gather to celebrate the power of God. Faithful God, with thankfulness, we come to worship you. We gather to sing praises to the God in whom we trust. Amen. Would you pray with me? On this Mother's Day, Heavenly Father, we pray that you would console those who are denied the chance to celebrate Mother's Day, the abandoned, the separated, the disappointed. Bring us all together as your family of faith. Sustain those who mourn their loved ones, for whom today is a day of grief. Inspire us to advocate for peace and guide us to see the part that we can play in creating harmony in this world reconcile us to each other. Kindle in us a celebration of the diversity of all families, of all shapes and sizes, of colors and faiths. Teach us to grow in compassion and understanding, remembering that even our differences, for our differences, we are all still your children. And encourage us, encourage us to share in the joy and effort of making healthy, peaceful communities. Open our hearts to reach out to our neighbors in charity and acceptance. For these things we pray as you taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
going to read this morning Psalm 98, which is found on page 540 in your pew Bible if you want to follow along. O oh, sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous things. His right hand and his holy arm have gotten him victory. The Lord has made known his victory. He has revealed his vindication in the sight of the nations. He has remembered his steadfast love and faithfulness to the house of Israel. All the ends of the earth have seen the victory of our God. Make a joyful noise to the Lord all the earth. Break forth in joyous song and sing praises. Sing praises to the Lord with the lyre, with the lyre and the sound of melody, with trumpets and the sound of the horn. Make a joyful noise before the King, the God, the Lord. Let the sea roar and all that fills it, the world and those who live in it. Let the floods clap their hands. Let the hills sing together for joy at the presence of the Lord, for he is coming to judge the earth. He will judge the world with righteousness and the peoples with equity. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I think I just should have stayed here to sing. Um, due to the fact that it's Mother's Day, we are again going to start an emphasis on collecting money to donate some layettes to Must Ministries. During this year, we had a gift given for this purpose, and we gave some to them and some to Inspiritus Ministries, which we helped um, Spencer, who uh, is a new member here, works for them, and we found out they had an awful lot of need as well. So we were able to share with both ministries, not as many to must as we normally do. So we want to make up for that uh, with what we do now. Each layette contains just some basic supplies for new parents, things that our parents would need, would get, would be able to uh, purchase for themselves perhaps, but they are in contact with people who don't have those means. So we like to do this to give them a fresh start for each child. And each bag costs about $100. Sometimes, uh, depending upon the prices that we can find, we can get them for a little bit less. But if you can make a donation toward that, you can either do it with your regular giving online or in a check, or there's a basket in the foyer if you want to make a donation this morning that says gifts for layettes. And um, I know that these parents really appreciate it. Thank you. Would you bow with me now as we pray together? Oh God, we're grateful for this day, another day of opportunity to use our gifts and our calling for good. We come into your presence today as a people who always need restoration, both in our relationship with you and in our relationship with each other. And so today, as we come together in worship, we, we sing our praises, we listen to the reading of your word and the interpretation of it, but we also come seeking forgiveness and restoration, asking that you would help us to overcome all that we have done in the week that we should not have done and all that we should have done as well. We lift up to you today our brothers and sisters who need your presence in their lives. We ask, O oh God, for those who are in the hospital to fill your presence with them. 
We pray for those who are at home who are experiencing illness as well. We pray for those who are lonely today. We pray for those who are suffering from grief. We ask for your special presence with them in their time of loss. And today on Mother's Day, we remember our mothers together. Some of us have lost our mothers, and we, in the midst of our grief, give you thanks for their example to us. We give you thanks, especially today, for our own mothers and for the gift that they bring or have brought into our lives. We lift up to you today our church, this congregation of followers who seek to go in the path that you would have us to go. We pray, O oh God, that you would help us as we follow in your footsteps. We pray for courage to make a difference in the world. We pray for we pray that you would encourage us along the way, that you would put courage into us so that we were able to do all that you call us to do. And we especially give you thanks for this time of worship in which we can remain with you for a time, in which our hearts and our souls can be fed by the power of your Holy Spirit at work in us. At the end of this service, as we enter into the world, having remained and abided with you in this place, may we bear the fruit that you would have us to bear. For this is our prayer, in the powerful name of the Christ who calls us. Amen and amen. We continue uh, this week our reading from the Gospel of John and chapter 15, today beginning with verse 9 and going through verse 17. My Father is glorified by this, that you bear much fruit and become my disciples. As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. I said these things to you so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be made complete. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. No one has greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. I don't call you servants any longer, because the servant doesn't know what the master is doing. 
but I've called you friends because I have made known to you everything that I have heard from my Father. You did not choose me, but I chose you, and I appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last, so that the Father will give you whatever you ask in my name. I'm giving you these commandments that you may love one another. I love fruit. I think that love has something to do with growing up in a part of the world where fruit was gorgeous and sweet and delicious. I grew up, of course, in Southeast Asia where you could climb a mango tree, build a tree house up there and just sit up in your tree house and pluck mangoes right off the tree and bite into them while that mango juice ran down your arms. Or you could go cut you a pineapple off a pineapple bush and, you know, cut it open and slice it up and again eat it while that pineapple juice ran down your arms. In fact, if you ever find yourself short on cash, when you're down to your last few hundred dollars, just spend it on a plane ticket to Southeast Asia because you can eat fruit for the rest of your life and find it most anywhere. I guess the closest similarity uh, in our context would be South Florida, you know, with those oranges and all that grapefruit, or maybe Hawaii that had similar uh, kinds of fruit to the sort that I grew up with. Here in Georgia, it's apples, right, or peaches, or watermelon. I don't guess peanuts are a fruit, but you could probably throw peanuts in there as well. One thing I know about fruit, always get it close to the source. Don't go to Publix around here or Kroger and buy a mango. It will be the worst thing you ever put in your mouth. If you're going to get a good apple, go up to Ella J and get a good one. I'm not sure where watermelon uh, is best in this state. But the point is, stay close to the source. Now, I came to watermelon late in life. I didn't used to like watermelon until I realized how well watermelon and yogurt go together. And you can put watermelon in a bowl with yogurt and it's like eating ice cream, except it's really a lot more healthy for you. Good fruit doesn't just happen. It's the result of a number of factors that work together to make it. It has to be the right fruit in the right place at the right time. It has to be in a climate that's good for it. It has to have the proper temperature and the proper amount of rainfall and the right soil and on and on we could go. We talked last week about the word abide And I made the comment at the end of the sermon that the reason that we abide in God, that we remain in God, is that we are then attached to the source of life. And after we have abided for a time, then we can enter into the world for the purpose of bearing fruit in it. So we gather for worship and we abide with God together. We share our own quiet moments with God wherever we are in the course of a day. And you can do this. We just had new sod put in our yard, and I've been out there watering for about an hour every day, and I've found that sitting there and watering my new sod can be time with God that passes pretty fast. We're fed in this process, but we are fed for a purpose. In time and after our abiding, we enter into the world to bear fruit, to become the source of life to others. 
Jesus makes this clear. Abide in my love. Love each other as I have loved you. And then he offers perhaps the most powerful verse in all of scripture because it's so true about him. Greater love has no one than this, that they lay down their life for their friends. Here Jesus grounds his entire life and ministry in love, in self-giving love that he expresses in the world. And he then commissions his disciples, and by extension us, to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last And he ends this portion of scripture with an admonition. This is my commandment. Love one another. I'd like to turn this passage on its head for just a moment today and ask a question. Not what fruit are you bearing in the world or what fruit am I bearing in the world, but what fruit have others borne in us? How are we the product of the fruit bearing that other people have done in the world? Who is it that has invested their gifts and their love in us to make us the people that we are? For me, it's a challenging question because every time I ask it, I am reminded that I am not responsible for what I have done in life. Other folks have poured themselves into me. My parents have loved me. And of course, many of us are reminded of that on this Mother's Day. I owe my mother a huge debt. I am the fruit that she bore in the world. She taught me much about how to be a loving and caring person. She pushed me to be more than I ever thought that I could be. She helped me to have confidence in myself. I know that not all mothers are like that, but many of them are. And if our mothers haven't done this for us, then other people have done it for us. People have believed in us. People have trusted us. People have cared for us. People have stood up for us when we couldn't stand up for ourselves. I do count many of my teachers in this number. I remember Miss Laura Highfill, my fourth grade teacher at Stoneview Elementary School in Lithonia, Georgia. She left the rest of the class by themselves one day and took me by the hand because it had just started snowing and she knew that I was only in the U.S. for one winter on furlough and I had not seen snow before in my life. And she took me out into the snow and she and I stood out there trying to catch snow on our tongues, snowflakes on our tongues as they came down. She wanted me to see what I had not seen before and that's what our teachers do for us, right? They help us to see what we have not seen before. And my mother and Ms. Highfield were just one, some in a long line of teachers who taught me so much and invested in me and ensured that long after, I, after they had quit teaching, their fruit in the world would be me. Churches have poured themselves into me as well. You certainly have as this congregation. I've learned from you. I opened my Bible this morning and I saw a card signed by Suri Pendarvis. I had forgotten that it was there. She passed away a couple of years ago. I learned about how to die from Sari Pendarvis. She taught me how to face it with courage and with hope. The North Rolling Fork Baptist Church of Gravel Switch, Kentucky took some risk with me because they called a green 25-year-old to become their part-time pastor. And they taught me far more than I taught them. I remember one member of the church asking asking me one day if I thought a woman could be a pastor. 
And I told him, absolutely. And Eddie went like this and said, shh, Brother Rob, please don't tell these folks around here that you believe that because I like your preaching and I don't want you to get fired. Now, he had it all wrong and all twisted up, and I didn't pay him any mind. But the point is that he loved me enough that even though he and I had absolutely different beliefs about that, we could still care about each other. And my hope is that somehow he's abided enough with God now that he believes in the gifts of his sisters in the faith to preach. And Butchell Park Baptist Church in Louisville, Kentucky called me to be its full-time pastor. They really were crazy because I was just 29 years old and I assumed the post and they bore their fruit in me and we learned together and we risked together. And I remember when we recommended that a divorced woman should become the associate pastor of the church And there was a big uproar about it. And I think it was as much because she was divorced as it was because she was a woman. And in that business meeting, a longtime member of the church, a divorced woman herself, stood up and said, if you refuse to call this woman as our associate pastor because she's divorced, then I'm going to submit my resignation as a Sunday school teacher because I'm divorced as well. The place got real quiet. And they called that person as associate pastor by unanimous vote. Nobody voted against her. And I've had people I worked for and people who worked for me who borne fruit in me. They've made me who I am. They've invested in me and I've learned from them valuable lessons about working with people in hopeful and healing ways. And of course, our families have poured themselves into us and borne their fruit in us. For some of us, that's our spouses or our children, parents and grandparents, on and on it goes. But because we've been given much, Jesus is saying to us, we have an obligation to bear fruit ourselves. To bear fruit in the world because the fruit has been born in us. Maybe you remember this. Last December, over two and a half consecutive days, Dairy Queen customers in Brainerd, Minnesota, surprised the driver behind them by buying their meal. The restaurant's manager says that this type of pay-it-forward chain sometimes starts to happen, but it never happens for 900 cars to do it in a row. It began spontaneously during lunch hour on Thursday. Tina Jensen, who runs two Dairy Queen restaurants in that city, says that one man asked the cashier if he could buy his own meal as well as the meal ordered by the stranger behind him. Ms. Jensen told CNN, there are all different types of ways to help people. I think this touched a lot of people that we didn't even know it touched, deeper than we know, and you don't know what's going on in a person's life. Overall, more than $10,000 in sales took place with the chain ending sometime Saturday evening. We started just asking and encouraging and letting them know, it's been five cars, do you want to continue it? It's been 15 cars, it's been 30 cars, it's been 400 cars. And you know, people started getting excited and it just continued. And when the restaurant closed on Thursday, the last customer left $10 to keep it going the next day, and the same thing happened again on Friday night. Everything started being tracked on Facebook Live, of course. After 500 consecutive cars, the page posted, what a great community we live in. 
And again, more than 900 cars would pay it forward in this random act of drive-through kindness. So here's my question for all of us this morning. If a community in Brainerd, Minnesota can pay it forward like this, then what might we as the Church of Jesus Christ accomplish in the world as we contribute to Layettes this morning, do all of the rest of it? What fruit might we bear in a post-Easter world, a world in which the love and grace of Jesus has been poured into us and by extension into the world? We have all been gifted so that we can gift. We all have received in order to grace the lives of others. And we don't all do it the same way. We're gifted differently. We connect with different groups of people, but this alone is great news. In this way, our influence in the world is multiplied. Our gifts are multiplied. We truly do have a larger-than-life impact as a result of all the opportunities that come our way. So let us go into this community this week as people who are determined to bear fruit. Together we've received grace and goodness and love. Others have invested in us, so now let us invest in the lives of others. The good news in a post-Easter world is that we have experienced that grace and goodness and love that have been made fully known in us. So let us now make that goodness and grace and love known to others. I tried to figure out how that long line of 900 cars came to an end. Somebody pulled up and somebody said, no, I don't think so. Now, I don't know what was going on in their life. I don't know what might have caused them to say that. But I do know this. For all of us gathered here this morning, there is absolutely no reason whatsoever for us to be the ones in that long line of folks going back through our own lives and prior to our lives who decide, eh, I don't think so. I don't think that I'm going to bear fruit even though others have borne it in me. I think that's why Jesus puts it the way that he puts it. If you abide in me and I in you, then together we will bear much fruit in the world. That's Jesus, in whose name we do all this fruit bearing. Amen and amen.
you stand with me for our benediction? And would you bow with me for it? Now go into the world, gifted people all. Go with the gifts that have been poured into you by God and by others. And go determined to bear fruit in the lives of all of those whom God places in your path. In the name of the God who created us, the Christ who walks beside us, and the Spirit who empowers us. Amen and amen. Amen.